Stitch People. I'm Lizzie Bean, the founder of Stitch People and host of the Stitch People podcast, where our goal with cross-stitching is to inspire your personal creativity. And our goal of the podcast is to help you make some new friends while you're at it. Today's interview is with Amanda de Campo Scavon. I hope I said that correctly. She is one of our Stitch People ambassadors and the founder of her brand, My People, based in Sao Paulo, Brazil. She is a beautiful person inside and out. She's got a full-time job, family, and she has cross-stitched over 1,000 Stitch People portraits since she was one of our first kind of early adopters back in 2014 of Do-It-Yourself Stitch People. So I hope you enjoy hearing from her, hearing about how to fill your creative well and find joy and satisfaction in your creativity and in the things that you do. By way of reminder, I just want to say, pick up something that you have put down this week. As you listen to Amanda's interview, as you think of ways to fill your own creative well, I just want to encourage you to jump back into something that you've put down that maybe you burnt out on, that you lost steam about. Um, It's always a good time to be creative. So that's my challenge for you today. Go find a long lost project that you want to finish up while you listen to this episode and enjoy my conversation with Amanda. Amanda, welcome to the Stitch People podcast. Thank you so much for being here. I'm really, really looking forward to chatting with you today. Thank you for inviting me. (laughs) Of course, of course. Um, As many of our listeners know, of course, as you know, um, Amanda is one of our first three Stitch People ambassadors. Um, We chatted with Giselle and Erica, who are our other two. We started with this small little group of people to kind of help us as guinea pigs figure out what it could be to be a little bit um, more of a leader in the Stitch People space, as they already kind of naturally were. And... uh, it's just been so, so fun to get to know you, Amanda, get to work with you a little bit more closely in that capacity. So just wanted to tell you my thanks for your ideas and excitement, and enthusiasm and patience and everything as we've explored that together. It's been a lot of fun. No, it's been great to know all of you and start to work with all of you. And I, I really, really want to do a lot of things with you guys. I think the project is amazing. I think so too. I think we'll I I think we'll find some really really fun ways to uh, to explore working together. So Amanda, yeah. will you tell us a little bit about yourself for people who aren't as familiar? Where are you from? Tell us about your family. What do you do during the days? What's life like for you? Okay. Hi everyone. I'm Amanda. <laughs> I am a Brazilian. I live in São Paulo. Uh, I have two kids, two boys, John and Patrick. Uh, my husband is kind of uh, half in English and half Brazilian, so that's why the names John and Patrick. <laughs> and uh, I start to do the embroideries uh, in 2015 uh, that I found out lazy, and uh, I started my people. And now I I I think I can't have to check this, but I think I did okay. A thousand and ninety-eight uh, pieces. So it's like a huge thing for me, uh, the embroidery in my life. And what? you I'm sorry. You've stitched over a thousand yes, Stitch People a portraits. A thousand ninety-eight. <laughs> in I'm, seven years. <laughs> I'm. I, I'm clearly. I'm clearly speechless. That's so many. Yes. And oh my goodness. And I, mean, I guess it makes sense because you found us kind of early on. But um, yes. if I recall, you said you've had one go pretty much to every continent as well. Yeah. No, only in Africa. Is that right? Okay. I, I have to That's make your last some, one. Uh, embroidery for Africa. Is the, <laughs> I have in Australia, Sweden, London, uh, wow. United States, Mexico, uh, I have a lot of places. It's really nice. That is wild. That yeah, is so, you know, it makes me appreciate like our global world. I, how cool, who would have thought, who would have thought when, you know, we were growing up and it was the early 90s, <laughs> like who would have thought that we would be sending things to across the world? Because I, I have a very similar feeling as you. Like I remember when we first I don't know, my, my first Stitch People book that went to like Istanbul or something. And Spencer was like, we just got an order from Istanbul. And it's like, what? Like, you just don't think about 
how somebody across the world would w want what you have or be able to find it, I guess, even though we have the internet. But that is so, so cool. Amanda, you've done 1,100 portraits, basically, in yeah. almost every continent of the world. That is yeah. that is such an accomplishment. Congratulations. No, thank <laughs> That's you. That's so, so cool. But it's really nice. And you're not sick of them. No, I actually love them. And um, like two years ago, I started to work in advertising again. Uh, and now I'm um, doing like uh, exercise of balance, the my, my people project and the advertising work. But yeah. it, it's, it's all happening. Real life. So I'm, I'm really happy with the... Good with the dimension that my people uh, established like in the mm. seven years. So it's, it, it's really good. And I love to do like the new patterns and to create different things. So it's very, it's very nice to see like people all over the world uh, sending me messages and say, I really want your work. So it's really nice. I love that. Well, and what's one of the reasons we, well, you know, I've always admired your spin on it. Um, your spin on Stitch People has always been very unique from the beginning. And um, and I think that's one of the reasons that we sort of liked having your perspective and flavor as maybe one of our first ambassadors, because you have a really great way of of sort of maintaining the simplicity of Stitch People. There's always a lot of white space. And yet you're just you're very specific and good with the details and with the accessories and it's just the addition of you know one or two little things that really makes it unique and it doesn't have to be um you know a huge portrait with a huge background and embroidered everything you don't have to go super super crazy to really capture the essence of someone and I think you I, for some reason the, the visual of like a little eyedropper is coming to mind it's like you suck up the little essence of someone and you put just a drop in and it's always like just the right amount which is anyway if, if you if anybody listening hasn't seen Amanda's work definitely go check it out we'll link it all over but um just super super great with accessories and details and uh how did that I don't know, has that always sort of been your natural style aesthetic? How did you sort of develop no. your style there? Like, I have one of my favorite pieces and that I can I, uh, show it for you, for you later. But it's like uh, 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 my people that I made uh, to go to German, to Berlin. And there was a couple. He's Spanish and she's Portuguese. And a, a friend of mine who live in, uh, in Berlin who asked me to do it. And so I was doing like the embroidery of just of them with the little baby. And then he asked me, oh, I want to put some little details on the piece. And I said, okay. Then I started like one, uh, like he's a photographer, put a camera. Okay. Uh, she works with flowers, put the flowers. Okay. Uh, he made a, a special edition of his photos that were only skies. Can you make like a little sky, like a, a picture? And okay. And then I was putting a lot of things and the piece was like huge, like with all these details. It was so beautiful. But I think like the idea came from my friend, not from me. <laughs> that's a, Well, it came from collaboration, it sounds like, which yeah. is the best way. Um, that's such a, that's so, such a fun story. And you were able to see that like, oh, this is, a, this is a thing. <laughs> all the story of the couple. So I put like little things about Portugal, little things about Barcelona. Oh, I love that. And little things about them together. Like the kid will love uh, what? watermelon so I put the watermelon Aww. so like little things and when they got the piece uh, she texted me saying oh my god this work is amazing because all of the stories uh, is in the um, big brothery and yeah like, oh, and they oh, knew god. just looking yeah. at it that it meant something to them and after this piece I start to get a lot of uh, commission bro uh, uh, orders to do like the similar like telling the story of the couple the family and everything yeah. with like tiny details so that's it's really so great cute. that's really really cute cool. and I think yeah, it's it really really cool. effective it does it does and it's um it's a great option for in between when somebody wants something more than just the people standing next to each other but they don't want to go so big as like creating a whole environment behind them of you know mountains or trees or something it can be really overwhelming so yeah just adding a you know a camera a bicycle a piece of watermelon you know like and and you have 
you have someone's story just right there. I love that Ooh, so it's really, much. It's really nice. And, and tell me about your colors too, because I feel like you you have a very specific aesthetic with your colors. I don't know. I don't want to like guide the question too much, but tell us how do you go about choosing colors for your portraits? Oh God. I I don't know if this is have anything to do with my kind of uh, work. Like I work at advertise and I have like this kind of I don't know, it's it's a way to look at things, like mm. to know what color color goes with which color, you know? Yeah. So for me, it's really easy, like to oh, uh, this is green, this is yellow, and everything put it together, and it's really good, you know. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. Um, like your your training in that in arena has sort yes, of helped. I think I have a good eye for, for you. Yeah, sure, yes. sure. So, but sometimes uh, a little tip. It's like uh, I I got in into Pinterest and put the Pantone, like green Pantone. So they put like the like the colors that go with green. So it's ah, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's That's good a really great like tip. To something. Sometimes here in Brazil, we have a, like a, a tradition. It's uh, when uh, a baby is going to bo- uh, be born, we kind of do these things to put on the maternity doors. It's like thing oh. brother, you know? Like to welcome the baby, to, uh, to put the name of the baby. Like I love that. To, to on the door of the maternity, it's the name, like Lizzie, and the yeah. baby, with the family and everything. So it's like this. It's really <laughs> cute. Yeah. Uh, but when I started to do this, uh, oh, God, I forgot what I was telling. <laughs> uh, we were talking about colors. Oh, the colors. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. When I started doing this, was, sometimes the mothers ordered me, like, the room is green, so mm. can you do something in the green pantone? And uh, okay, then I st- uh, I try to work in all the colors, and sometimes it's pink, sometimes it's uh, yellow and green, yeah. and sometimes I keep doing to combine with the room, you know? That's because really after interesting. The, maternity, the mother will put the piece on the room, the the yeah. biggest room. Oh, I love that. Do. For, for those who aren't familiar, um, I used to work in, uh, as a graphic designer a long time ago before Stitch People but um, uh, and some freelance. But for those who don't know what Pantone is, in graphic design and advertising and printing, Pantone is like the color god of the world. Pantone is a company that um, is sort of the number one. I think, that, I think it's ink, ultimately, ink suppliers. Um, but they their whole business, they're kind of the number one um, company to make color consistent for everyone. So when a graphic designer is working with a color palette, how do you know that what they're seeing on their screen, which screen, you know, I might have a Mac screen and you might have a PC screen and somebody might have an LG PC screen and somebody might have a Dell PC screen, you know, who's to say even all our screens have the same color profile. Um, Pantone uh, values are the means by which all designers, uh, marketers, advertisers communicate to make sure that the colors they're referring to are the same. So as such, Pantone will often choose like a color of the year that you'll see around a lot. Or they have, like Amanda mentioned, you can go online and Google Pantone color palettes. Um, color is is what they do. So if anybody hasn't ever heard of Pantone before or Pantone color values, definitely give that a Google or search on Pinterest because you might find some really cool inspiration for um for, for color palettes and colors that work together. Like Amanda was saying, you just sort of know that they work together. You don't know why. Um, if that doesn't come as naturally to you, Pantone is a really great resource for that. So I'm glad that you brought that up, Amanda. No, and sometimes like um, the, 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 the orders, like, can you bring some kind of orange and pink? And you, oh God, maybe... I don't know if that that work together. So if you put it online, like totally. on Pinterest, Pantone, like pink and, or, and orange, they will put like a, pa- a palette. I yeah. don't know if that's the right yeah, yeah. palette. Yeah, I'm going like from pink to orange and all the the colors in between that mm-hmm. you can use it. So it's really nice and really helps sometimes. Totally, totally. Especially if you're stuck on colors that like pink and orange don't, always go together so you kind of have to choose you know if somebody has an interesting unique combination like that um that's that's really great it's really helpful yeah (laughs) totally so amanda how do you manage um 
you know, you have kids of your own, you have a full-time job, you're taking portrait commissions on the side. How do you manage the flow of work for your uh, Stitch People portraits? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> it's not like the, the my routine. It's really like agitated because my boys is eight and six. So usually after the World Cup right now, they are like crazy about football. So I have to take them to football at the club. So they make the practice and I work in the club. And when I'm at home at my uh, free time, I do the embroidery thing. Hmm. Because for me, Lizzie, it helps like, it's not only uh, because it's, uh, it's a work for me, but it has also helped me like mental health. Yeah. You know, I think it's really good to make the embroidery. I get to a, a, a very calm place when I'm doing the embroidery. So uh, I, I actually don't have much free time, but I think on my free time doing the embroidery, it's really helpful for me, you know? Yeah. Like, really calming. I really loved it. I, I think it's like kind of a meditation totally. when I'm doing it. So it brings me a lot of peace. That's why I think I'm able to put the kids, the work and the embroidery together because it's like, it calms me, you know? So it's, yeah. it's a good ba balance. <laughs> I like that a lot. It's important to, um, it's important to understand what something brings. What does it add to your life? Because there's always going to be, especially if you're selling something, there's always a little bit of stress with somebody wants something specific or they have certain expectations. There's maybe a deadline, a due date. And that all is kind of a form of stress. But if you know that the pros outweigh the cons, if you know exactly what it does for you, that it's meditative, that it's creatively fulfilling, you know, just to be able to remind yourself, no, 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 this, this isn't me just kind of like... Um, you know, exploiting my skills for a, for a little side paycheck. Like, no, this is something that um, that really adds value and meaning to your life. I mean, that's that's so important. And I think one of the the most special thing about Stitch People, uh, it's because you get the personality of each person. Like, uh, when someone look uh, came to me and asked, "I want embroidery of this family." So the father is like this and this and this. The mother is like this and this and this. So you, you kind of put a, a personality in, in every kind of totally. uh, a, a person. So it's that's really nice because you actually have this kind of trait with your client. Like, what do you want to uh, eternalize on this? What yeah. do you want the meaning of this? Uh, to put something special to try to eternalize a very special date or not a very special date. I made right. uh, a lot of embroideries about like the loss of the loved ones. So yeah. it's, it's, it's really nice because you can be, uh, I think, through Stitch People uh, in people's lives, like for so many reasons, like, uh, to, uh, the, I don't know, you bought a new house, you can do something about this. Totally. You, you get a new dog, you are pregnant, you want to tell your parents that you are pre pregnant. So, like, you want to ask someone to be the godfather, the godmother of your child. So, I think there is, like, so many things you can do through uh, Stitch People. And I think this is the most amazing, because you can always be, like, creating new things, you know? Yeah. So, that's what I'm really... There's no about. limits. <laughs> No limit. I, I always say to my customers, like, you have anything you want. Put this in your mind. Like, if you want to put the kid as an astronaut, okay, we can manage that. If yeah. you want to do, like, a sunset, uh, I don't know, every, anything. Like a Christmas yeah. tree, you can create anything. There's so, always a way. Yes, and I think that's so nice because so many options. To do yeah and different gifts and I think it's very affectionate gift totally like. it's it makes something a little more special because I, I was thinking about you know as you're listing off all of these reasons you might make a portrait or give someone a portrait and it's like you know I think I think a, a, a cross-stitch portrait especially because it's personalized to the individual 
it really, it's a great solution for those times when you want to do something special, but you don't really know like what to do or what's appropriate. Like, for example, buying a new house. That's a really cool thing, if it, especially it's someone's first house or maybe it's, you know, mom and dad have finally retired and they've now moved to their dream location in Arizona or on the coast. You know, they, you know, you're commemorating a house and it's like, what do you buy them a house plant? <laughs> like, and then it's like, well, that's something they're going to have to take care of. And then it's like, well, do you get them a gift card for like furniture? Or, like, what do you do? But but a Stitch People portrait, that's so meaningful. It's special. It's something they can hang on their wall. It's something that, you know, it's just, it bridges that gap. Same thing with like a funeral, you know, if someone passes and you want to memorialize them, like, I guess you could frame a photograph of them, but that's just, it's just so lit literal. It's like so obvious in a way that it's like, well, that's weird. And then it's like, okay, do you just send flowers like everybody else that are going to die or you're going to have to take care of them? Like, but this, it's, it's something, I don't know. There's just something to it. I don't know if it's the details or the personal or the handmade or if it's like the magic combination of it all. But yeah, I loved how you said that. I'm blabbing now. But the way you said it and like listing all those things, it was like, yeah, it really is the perfect bridge gift to, of, of making something more special, but not like, but it's not weird. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, Ooh, yeah. it's just thoughtful. And you, you kind of it's like you uh, mix feelings, you know. Sometimes yeah. I get like messages, uh, like people crying, but, but crying about happiness. Like, yeah, oh, this is such a beautiful work. I'm really, uh, how can I say it, emotional? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. You know, like, but it's, I'm happy. Totally, <laughs> this totally. Is and I think like today, even after the pandemic, I think this is. A, a, the thing that if you stopped for a second and look for a, a present, a gift that is really personalized and uh, it's really, you, you stop to think about that people and, and to do something special for her, you know? So I think this is why it's really nice. Yeah, uh, the, to create different things, and so you can. Oh, oh I'm, I'm a big fan. <laughs> yes. So, well, and I, you also just tapped into something else, and you sort of tapped into it earlier too. That I think is really easy for people to overlook, especially. I, I feel like I see this in new stitchers, people who are kind of getting into stitch people, or you know, cross stitch portraits for the first time. Um, it's really easy to be hard on yourself about getting details just right. Or does this look like so-and-so does this look like the dog? Oh my gosh, did I do it? Did I do it? It's very easy to forget the, um, what you tapped into this kind of emotional mm -hmm. transaction. It's not just, Hey, this is for you. Doesn't it look like you, <laughs> you know, doesn't this look like you and your whole family? It's, it's the reason people go to museums and stare at a piece of art and can cry about it. It's because, they are putting something into what they're seeing. What they're seeing elicits something within them and gives it meaning for them. So don't discount what Amanda was just talking about, everyone, about kind of what, what the recipient is going to feel when they see it. How when you put in all those little accessories, the little watermelon, the little bicycle, the little camera, the receiver, especially if that's something they're into, will know exactly what that's in reference to. Oh my gosh, there's a cloud because of that one time that we blah, blah, blah. Do you remember the you cloud? Remember yes, exactly. Nice. Exactly. Yeah. Oh my gosh, there's the little whatever from that one time we whatever. Like you, you have to trust the process a little bit and trust that the person viewing it will infuse it with their own context and their own meaning that will push it over the edge of whatever it is that you think you lacked, which you probably didn't in the first place as far as like skill or, you know, getting all the details right. But, but that really, that emotional, like you said, crying with happiness of just people are awed by what you can do with these. No, and so another day, uh, my niece gave me one embroidery of me. And no, so this is a, a very nice story. They actually li lived in a boat here in the coast of Brazil. Cool. So we didn't see each other for like two and a half years. And in January, I went to meet them. And she gave me the embroidery. And I was, oh my God, this is so beautiful. And she's, oh, I didn't like it. The, it's not good. And I said, Jo, her name is Joanna. 
this is amazing. This is so beautiful. I'm so happy that you put some time to do something for me. So this is really special, priceless. And it's in my desk right now, uh, the little embroidery that she made of me, like with gray hair, <laughs> because she didn't have the black thread. But it was so... <laughs> she did gray. <laughs> hey, it's close, I guess. <laughs> it's approaching. <laughs> yes, like my white hairs over here. <laughs> but like, I, I mean, I guess what else would you choose? If you yes, didn't have black, like green. <laughs> <laughs> dark brown, it was maybe. So and yeah, I was that's very cute. She, she she was here a few days ago, and she, uh, I was showing my embroideries, and she said, "Oh, they are so perfect." And she said, "Oh, I really don't like mine." And then I said, "Joe, I want you to know that I'm doing this like every single day for the last seven years. That is why it's good because I'm practicing a lot." So. If you start practicing a lot, you'll be great at it. This is with totally. anything you start to do. Embroidery, crochet, and watercolor, and anything you have anything. to practice. So I see sometimes, like, people send me messages. Oh, I see your work is really good. I don't like mine. And I said, come on. <laughs> Take a deep breath. Like, is your first embroidery? Yes. Of course, it's not going to be great. So, right. give some time to it. It's, yes. With time, everything's get better. <laughs> totally, totally. And, and like you said, um, doing a little bit every day, I mean, that that's... Or, or uh, you know, a few, at least once a week, like just working at it over time. And you don't have to, if you're embarrassed about your skill level for whatever reason, which I would argue anyone feeling that way to reassess that viewpoint. But if you're not wanting to give away your works yet, if you're feeling self-conscious, um, there is so much power in doing something just for yourself. And it can feel a little bit alien to a lot of us. I think especially women are so used to doing things for other people all the time. And that something isn't worth doing if it's not for someone else. But like, okay, if you want to get better at cross stitching, if you want to try embroidery, but your, you know, stitches aren't coming to you, stitch your favorite, I don't know, design your favorite characters from a show that you're watching and stitch them just to put on your own wall or on your desk to make you happy or stitch, you know, create a series of little, um, plants you know we have like the plants book or the floral motifs like just create some little things to hang on your own wall um to, yeah, to give yourself an excuse to practice I, I see a person that uh, she makes like this huge uh, uh things about the year so like mm. 2022 and she put all the little things that she uh, have done in the year so like january and she makes like a pizza you know yeah yeah, like, yeah. they're like each month pizza. has a slice Yes, and yeah. in each slice she puts a lot of small things. So it's really like simple. You can do it. Totally. It's for you if you're yep. embarrassed to give it away. But I think oh, what you say now, Lizzie, it's sometimes in the beginning of my people, I remember that people came to me and they say like the things about each of the characters. So like the father the man on the piece was always like, oh, put with the tennis racket, put with the suit because he's a lawyer, put with the football, put with, yep. okay, yeah. so then let's do it to the mother. What I can put with her? Uh, uh, oh, nothing. Put with the flower on, put with the heart. And I said, come on, guys, this is not fair. It's we have not. to. <laughs> so... I started to say about this, like, uh, people, come on, women should have, like, their hobbies, yes. things that sh they really like to do, uh, otherwise than be with the kids, with the husband and everything. Mm. So what's her profession? What she really likes to do is, like, drink a wine in the, the end of the day. So put with the wine. Yes. Uh, like, to paint something, to run, to... I don't know. Yeah, a little a little pair of headphones because she's always listening to podcasts or yes, you know, whatever anything. it is. What's mom's thing? Totally. But this is, was a thing that really annoyed me. Like always ask for the 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 the, the women and oh nothing. And I said, oh, oh come yeah, on, don't, don't let them off so easy because <laughs> they're probably often the ones uh, ordering too for their families or whatever. But yeah, yeah, it's important to foster 
things for yourself that, because, um, what is that analogy? Like if you have a vase of water, the only way that you can fill any other vases of water to keep those flowers alive is if the first one is like overflowing, absolutely overflowing or else it's going to deplete from the first vase. And so, yeah, it's, no, it's, it's really important for you to have like a moment to do mm-hmm. something for yourself. And mm-hmm. even lazy, it's like a, a long shower in the end of the day, but something you can do for yourself alone. Totally. Totally. Stay with your thoughts. This is very important. Yes. And I if think like you teach people, creative not, juices need it. And not only from the cross teach, but like embroidery, it's really nice for you to have this kind of place that you're silence and you're like in a meditation doing yeah. something. I think this is really powerful. I, I, I say so this to all my friends, like Sometimes they are really stressed with work and, oh, I can't do this anymore. And I said, you have to make something with your hands. Like, it's not embroidery, it's like a ceramics, I don't know, like pottery. Oh, yes, yeah. ceramics, pottery. Yep, exactly. Yes, yep. like do something cooking, like mm-hmm. start to make cooking classes. Or, and you don't have... And today, with the, the facility of internet, you don't actually have to make like courses and everything. You can find everything on YouTube, like to everything. make like, a special thing for you. So I think it's like I know sometimes uh, the routine is overwhelming, especially for women. But I think it's really important for you to have a, a special moment of the day for you to to do something for you. It's, it's the best I could not agree more. And I love that you even said it doesn't have to be cross stitch. It doesn't have to be embroidery that, uh, you know, sometimes whether it causes, you know, the, the pinching in the needles, sometimes it can be uncomfortable for people or sometimes you just get burnt out from a thing or sometimes it just doesn't resonate with you. You know, just go out and find whatever it is. And it can look different for people. Some people, what what you get with embroidery and cross stitching Amanda somebody might get from going on a run somebody might get from using power tools or maybe they learn to change the oil in their car and that's really empowering and fun and cool to get their hands dirty you know it, it's going to be different yes. for everybody but just take off whatever limits you've put on your time or your your worth or your skills everything what is it there's this uh She's like a business coach online, Marie Forleo. I followed her since like 2012. And she has this phrase, everything is figure outable. And it's it's 100% true. Everything is figure outable. And any one of us just objectively has, we all have the same parts. We all have a brain. We all have a body. You know, like theoretically, any one of us can figure out anything. You know, some things come more naturally to others than, you know, I'm never going to be an engineer. And I've accepted that about my <laughs> but, um, but I could, but I could, it would be hard, but I could, you know, and so people who tell themselves like, oh, I just don't have an eye for color. Watch some YouTube videos about color theory, figure out why certain pinks don't go with certain oranges. Hint, it has to do with warm and cool. It has to do with reds and oranges versus blues and greens. You know, there's different kind of, um, pools of color to draw from it, but, but watch a 20 minute YouTube video and maybe it'll click. And maybe that is a skill you can develop. Maybe that's, maybe that's something you're actually really good at. You just haven't given it any time to explore and some, it. You know, and sometimes to find out different things, like you work with different parts of your brain. So it's yes. really helpful for yes. everything. So I think this, uh, when I was a little like bored, with my embroidery, I start to do the the course of watercolor, like yes. to work different things. So this was so nice for me to work with different colors and to see how colors work in watercolors, completely different. So like to find out new things to you can work it on. I think that this is really nice. And I yeah. think especially women need to have like this ship <laughs> to make different things, you know, to learn different things. Otherwise, to take care of yeah. the family, the kids and everything. Right. And to learn to learn different things for you. You know, for every book you read about child psychology because you're such a kick-ass mom, great. Read a, read a blog post. Read something about creativity or something that you are interested in that will benefit you. You know what I mean? It's like, because yeah. I think a lot of women too sort of set aside personal goals or personal hobbies because 
because they're interested enough in the stuff that they do for everyone else. Sure, let's say Ooh. mom is cooking a meal. You know, mom cooks dinner for family every day. And, and maybe she enjoys cooking. And so she tells herself, oh, no, it's, it's me. That's my me time. I mean, sure, I'm cooking for everyone else, but I, I, I like that, too. I like cooking. And that's better than nothing. I mean, I will say that's better than nothing. But it really is like, no, go sit in a bathtub by yourself with a book. That's and just for fun. Like I hate to cook. So for me, it's not a for me time. It's like, yeah, oh, right. God, I hate what I'm doing. <laughs> right, right. But yeah, even if it does overlap, that's great. But but yeah, take it. It's it's there's something different about, and and it's not even in a selfish way. It's in a way you know. Wouldn't you want your children, your husband, your partner, your friends? Don't you want them to take time for themselves? Don't you want them to do things that interest them and light them up? So why wouldn't you want that for yourself as well? They want that for you, you know. Yes. I, I, I have so many friends who's whose parents are maybe retired now and have slowed down. And a lot of my friends are going like, man, I wish my mom would go take a class or I wish my dad would get a little part-time job because he's so bored. They're so unfulfilled. And it's like, just, yeah, take, take the risk, go do something new and interesting. Go, I don't know, go to a thing at the library and learn about yes, something you didn't know before. Walk, to painting, to yes, some totally. different kind of walks. I don't know. Yes, exactly. Like even just driving a different pathway home or something, just changing to a new anything. Podcast, something. Yes. <laughs> yes, totally. I was actually, and this is for those who are listening to this next week, um, tomorrow is the first of the month. So we're going to be sending out our new Stitch People Club pattern. And I try and write like a little blurb about just something we're up to. And I, I told Spencer last night, I think I'm going to write about exactly ultimately what we're talking about here, Amanda. Like, I last yesterday, <laughs> yesterday I pulled up Spotify and I needed something to listen to and I wasn't sure like what music I've been listening to movie soundtracks lately, which has been really fun. Uh, I used to do that a lot in high school, so it's been fun to revisit that. But I pulled up um, Kanye West <laughs> on Spotify because I don't really listen Lazy. to that genre. And I was like, what's the big deal? What's the big deal about Kanye West? Why does everybody who likes rap or who likes that genre go crazy for it? And Spotify has these big, like, amalgam playlists of, like, the best of. So I pulled up, like, this is Kanye West. And I started listening to it. And, like, some of the songs, especially I recognized from when they came out back in, like, the early 2010s or whatever. And so I knew some of them. And I listened for, for like, an hour. And it's, like, still not my genre. But I, but I was like, oh, okay. Like, he mixes a lot of interesting uh musical elements outside of the rap genre into his stuff and like it's different and I can see why like oh oh I could see why people think this is interesting or different really Again, like him. <laughs> still not my thing exactly but like okay some of it was like okay this song or this moment so you know just even that like like you said listen to a new podcast or, or watch that movie that you've never seen, but everybody's seen. Like, I remember when Spencer and I finally watched The Godfather. We were like, we've never seen this movie. It's supposed to be the best movie of all time. Let's just watch it. Like, read read Harry Potter if you haven't. Just the first one to see what it's about. Or just try, you know, just try something new Ooh, that you don't yeah. know. It doesn't mean you're going to love it. I don't love Kanye West now, especially with his, he's going off the rails. But like... Eh, now at least I know more than I did and I have a little more context about what people are talking about okay I was, and I could try something else I was, I was without any series like oh god which series should I yeah you're like caught up now? you're all finished and then there was like the Sopranos and I uh, didn't see the Sopranos in the beginning of the yeah, 2000s same. and I said okay now I'm gonna watch the Sopranos and I watched I think it's six seasons but yeah, it was I think a there's great Oh. oh, good. I'm and glad you liked it. That's one that was, I didn't watch it either. Spencer didn't. It's on our list now, but it was really good at the time. People were crazy about it, Everyone but I just never watched it. About. Yeah. And I didn't see at the time. So now recently, I think last year, I yeah. put all the, all the Sopranos to play on. <laughs> Fun. And it was great to yeah. watch it. I love that. Yeah. There's something to be said for like, like, don't give up on something that you yeah. were going to do or you were going to check out or or maybe again like uh, there's I think there's a lot of value in um 
in exploring something that you might be hesitant to otherwise, like a, like this Kanye West example, like, eh, I don't really care, but I'm curious enough. Like, listen to some opera if you've never listened to opera. Watch a show that you've never seen that you're not sure you're going to like. And if you don't like it, well, now you know, but at least you have Yay. some context for people who have seen it. But you might just find, like with The Sopranos, that like, yeah, you, you really like it. And you watch the whole thing and now you know what the hype was about. It can be um, very... Uh, very, very fulfilling to draw creatively from a bunch of different pools. Um, a lot of good acting teachers that I've had over the years talk about the best actors are the most interesting people because if you get a job to portray someone who's in a phase of life or in a intersectionality of life from a place in the world that you know nothing about, how can you possibly portray them as an actor? So it's really important to watch all types of shows and visit all types of places and talk to all types of people so that you can taste, you know, what all types of people are like. And I think, I don't know, I think that goes for way more than just acting. That's kind of a literal thing because you're portraying someone, you need to have some context. But, um, but the way that your experiences show up in visual art or in crocheting or in cross stitching or in quilting or embroidery, whatever it is, um, you know, you will, you will, see that you know if you get really inspired by Georgia O'Keeffe suddenly like look at how that uh will affect your color palettes that you're using in your stitch people portraits you know it everything crosses over in ways that I think we don't always know and can't always try you have to find the things that you have more uh you like most like I really like photography so I went and started to make a course about it. Now I really know how the camera works and everything. Totally. And I love the stream makeover shows that you have in the U.S. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. I always watch the, the Brothers one. Oh, yeah. The, Property Brothers. They're great. Uh, the beautiful, what's her name? Oh, my God. They're from Oh, uh, Gaines. Joanna Gaines. Oh, yeah. God. I think she's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> And so I really like to just sometimes just put on and watch it. It's yeah. good. Calming. It's yes. nice to have something that you like. So totally. I think, but I think sometimes also, Lizzie, I think now these days we have so much options of entertainment that it was like, it's kind of, oh God, I, I, I really want to be quiet right now. And that's why I think Big Brother fits this because it's like totally. a, a me time, a yes. silent time. But and it's you, literally you know, using your body in a different way. You're you're looking not at screens. You're looking at something still. You're using your hands. It's it's like physically healthy to change your yes, pace a little but bit. But I think sometimes, like the whole week, you stay in your cell phone and in your computer, and you have to have like this kind of peaceful time, yes. not with the screens, not with noises, not yes. with nothing. So I think that's that's really good, like for hand thing, uh, hand yeah. Totally. Anything like to draw, to write a letter, a postcard, something like yeah. do something with your hands. I think this is very, very nice. Yes. Oh, man. I mean, I uh, clearly could talk about this for a very <laughs> long time. I think it's so important. And especially, especially the way the world is going. It's funny. I've seen a number of my friends this year in particular are starting gardens for the first time. And I think it's a really interesting thing that the more, I don't know, it seems like the more we become reliant on technology, on the internet. I mean, Spencer and I have been talking recently. You can't, if you're running a business online, you have to be in social media. Like that's where business occurs now. Um, but it's like the more we do that, I'm seeing this little pendulum swing of everybody like, I would like to spend more time outside or like, I would like to use my hands more. I would like to grow something or make something. It's like, it's like there's this, yearning and inside of our it's really exhausting souls. to be like creating content and everything and yes even now the platforms are not delivering i don't know right for you yep. if you feel like this but for my people like ugh, yep. it's terrible <laughs> and it's just it, the algorithms just change and you can be yeah. doing fine and then it'll change and then you'll figure it out and then it'll change yeah but it's really it, hard and you have like to make some reels. You spend a, an hour and a half to yep. make sometimes things for thirty seconds. Yep. <laughs> that somebody will watch and go, "Oh, that's nice," <laughs> and they just scroll right by. And it's like, okay. Yes. So it's like, and I do it too. So, 
Yeah. Sometimes you have to be away of screens. Like I want to do gardening. I want to yeah. be in the nature. I want to be anywhere away from the screens. Right. Yes, Just, but I think yes. this is because of the routine put us in this kind of context all day long. Yeah. So like, and for some people, it's like challenging to be away, but I think it's actually very healthy. We can totally. establish a few moments to be away of the screens. Totally. Now, I want to ask you about being away from your screens because you mentioned you're a photographer and I know on your personal Instagram I feel like your stories are always so beautiful and it seems like you're always out adventuring with your kids, like going on walks and going to the beach. So it seems like you have a really um, natural propensity to to leave the house and to get out and go do things. Is that something that comes naturally to you or do you have to make that conscious decision to go out and about or to plan something? You know, how does that look to like go to the beach with your kids or go do something fun? No, I always, always love to travel a lot. So that this is a passion for me. I, I love to go to new places, meet new people. And this is actually the best, one of the best things for me that I think is yeah. in our lives. <laughs> yeah. But I think um, after the pandemic, here we stay, uh, the four of us was uh, closed in the house for kind of almost a year. Mm-hmm. So... Now today that we can go out and do things, I, I, sometimes of course I rather be at my home doing nothing. But yeah, if I get nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. But I think it's like kind of a trauma because we stay so much time inside, and I watch the kids going like a year of their lives in the apartment. Mm. So like I really want them to try to do to see everything, yeah. you know. Uh, so I think, it, and I think like for childhood purposes, it's really important for them to leave the city, go to parks, meet new kids, play football, go to make sports and everything. But yeah. sometimes I, I, I prefer my, my bed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that's great. So it seems like you, you have a really good um, balance for that. I, I could totally, I mean, Spence and I watch, we have a, a lot of friends with kids, um, and it's, oh, I just can't imagine poor kiddos who all they want to do is go out and play and not being able to do that. I can imagine how uh, they must be very relieved to be able to go oh, out and yes, about and, and sure. play. Yeah. I, hopefully, hopefully, no. Luckily, we have like a huge uh, balcony at mm. our apartment. So we, we used to take sunny uh, sometimes over here and we play. I bought a small, like, tiny swimming pool because it's really hot here in brazil so we can pass sometimes it was good but a trauma <laughs> yeah right you make the best of it but it's yeah. it's a lot yeah but it, i i really love uh, to take them to go to different places to know different cultures uh, i think this is really important for them yeah. and i try to bring this to their education that's and, great. And it's really nice. And I try to bring embroidery also to their education. Uh, this week happens something really cute. Uh, a friend of my, my oldest is going to a different city here in Brazil, but it's a different city. She's moving yeah. out. And, and then he came to me saying, Mommy, I really like her. I want to do something special for her. Can you do a, a small embroidery of her and I can do other things around it and I said of course then I made her like little one I will post this this Aww. embroidery in the few days I can't wait and he he used uh, a crayon uh, I will show you I can show you this on my people but it's like a pentel cr- uh, crayon and you can put the oh how can I say the fabric when you I forgot the name uh, is it like a transfer crayon? Like you, he could yes, but it was, like the, the iron. iron. Yeah. Iron. Okay. Yeah. 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 So you can paint wherever you like, and you put the iron on it, and it's like make a uh, stamp. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So he put like a, a, a little circles of blue and everything, and then oh. he asked me, "Mom, can I do the na- her name on the embroidery?" And I said, "Of course." Then I use like the the 
the pen then goes yeah. away with the iron and he embroidery her name oh, so cute <laughs> that's so sweet she will remember um, that the rest of her life i remember when i moved i was seven years old and my best friend at the time his name was matthew alexander from Clarkston, Michigan, if you happen to be listening to this, Matthew. Uh, he gave me a Lizzie the Lizard beanie baby, and he chose oh. it because it was my name, Lizzie. I still have it. I like. I know it's in a box somewhere. I could never get rid of it because it was like he was my best friend, and we did kindergarten and first grade together. And and it, like I still remember. I've tried to find him on Facebook, but it's such a generic name. But like I bet her, she will remember that forever, and especially because it's so personalized no, that he so helped cute. you make and, it. And they are both very shy. So he gave it to her, and she was like, oh, this is so cute. And I was like, oh, you too. <laughs> That's so pure. <laughs> Love yes, that. Yes, what a, really and what beautiful. a great thing. Like, clearly he's watched you all of these years making these, and he's picked up on the fact that this is something special. This is something you do for special moments. And so here was a special moment in his life, and he so thought, cute. I'm going to make a portrait about it. I'm just I would delighted. Put it in the next few days, and I would put with the English subtitles Aww. for people to understand it. But yeah. it was actually like a really cute thing. And I was so proud of him. Of like course. a little boy wants to, to how, how can I say, present her, his yeah. friend with something special. I was oh, so proud of you, little yeah. boy. <laughs> it's so thoughtful. Oh my gosh. Oh, oh. Really cute. My heart is so full. That's the cutest story. Well, I mean, like, mom points for you. That's awesome. And way to facilitate that and help him learn and see. And, oh, that's so great. Well, I'm curious. um, You mentioned traveling as being something you love to do. So as we sort of approach the end of our chat, have you tell us about your favorite places you've traveled? And also, have you taken your kiddos with you abroad anywhere? You know, what are your favorite places you've gone and that you've gone as a family? The kiddos always come with us. (laughs) But uh, I I think it's because of recent uh, trip that we've made. Uh, got, we went to London oh, fun. And, in 2022 and I think it was the first trip that we made together oh no not the first one but the second one that we made together after the pandemic so it was okay. really good like to be able to travel again Yeah. and I think it was amazing because like talking about the embroidery the, the stores over there were like amazing yeah. like beautiful and so sophisticated and like the scissors are wonderfully made and the threads, the fabrics. It was like, oh, my God, I don't want to leave this store anymore. And like UK uh, is a very crafty place. <laughs> they know they know how to do it there. <laughs> oh, and actually, I think it was in London, like England, during the First World War. They used the embroidery to the soldiers that were hurt so they can do this, like, uh, recovering process. Mm. I saw this on an embroidery channel, something like this, but I think it's, like, a a really true story. Like, they have pictures of the soldiers doing the embroidery. was used as a a, a recovery. Yeah, it's... It's I, like you said, it's meditative, it slows your mind, but it's also fine motor skills and it's comprehension of a pattern. And yeah, there's a lot going on. That's a really and cool Another one. trip that we made was like amazing was uh, we go uh, north of the Argentina, like was a cross border to Bolivia. It was like a desert. It's called Jujuy, like J-U-J-U-Y. Okay. It's, amazing place like beautiful huge desert and they have like the salt desert over there it's called salinas granges it's like amazing cool. like the it's a huge white thing and you just see sky and white it's so amazing it was a, awesome a, no it's amazing amazing the boys were like oh my god what is this place and that's so cool amazing experience uh, in Argentina was wow. great. Now, where you're in Sao Paulo, is that right? Yeah, it's Sao Paulo. And is it? I'm I'm assuming. I imagine it's very humid there. 
You, do you get yeah. four full seasons? You know, what's your what's your weather like there normally? No, God, right now it's raining a lot here, but it's really hot. Like, I you 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 we here we do the measure in Celsius. Sure, it's sure, sure. You do in Fahrenheit, right? Yeah, I'll, I'll like, get ready to Google. <laughs> yeah. Now today it's like twenty five, twenty eight Celsius. I don't know in Fahrenheit, but Let's it's see. really warm. According to Google, that is 77 degrees Fahrenheit. So yeah, that's pretty warm. <laughs> yes. Yeah. But and it's in, usually in the, hotter than that. Yes. No, in like summertime, we, now we are entering the, oh, uh, f- no, it's not fall. Oh, it's fall. Yes. Fall. Yeah. Yes. So we're entering on fall. No. Oh, yes, fall. I'm doing like a complication. Yeah. To well, to you're, let's see. I'm in... Mountain and you're three. I think you're in the eastern time zone, right? Three hours ahead, two out, two or three hours ahead. No, I think it's four. But I, four? I think it's now it's fall time. We're entering because we have fall, winter now, and then uh, we oh, go going into spring. Yeah. But uh, right now it's raining a lot, but it's really warm. Yeah, we don't have actually like a, a very strong winter. We okay, don't have no snow, snow over here. No, so it's like. It, you, any time of the t- of the year, you're gonna have sun here in Brazil. Yeah. It's a very sunny place with a lot of beaches. But São Paulo is like a huge city. Yeah, we have beaches around like an, an hour. Oh, okay, of a trip with a car, but it's uh, the city here is really hot. A lot of concrete. Yeah, yeah. It's one of the it I traps think the heat. Biggest, yes, it's one of the biggest cities in South America. I think it's the biggest cool actually so it's like huge and i really want to do and i say this because i don't have the time to do it but i really want to make the instagram take over and take you all of you to go to the, my favorite stop store oh, here fun. in Paulo. it's beautiful and then show a little bit of sao paulo because yeah it's, huge. it's really nice i love to see it well but and i was I, just thinking I want to about do, like, nice you know so yeah I have right to- right right <laughs> <laughs> make it make it all look good. Um, yeah. But yeah, what you were saying about, you know, the desert and the uh, the sand, uh, how cool it is for your kids to see, you know, London, England is going to be such a different climate. And to see, you know, sand dunes, desert, like that's such a different climate. It's, um, I think, some of the coolest things you can do with kids is just show them that like, yeah, this is, here's a desert and people live here or like, here's a rainforest. People live here. Here's the East coast of, you know, the U S is this lush forested gray area. And people live here that, that people's lives all around the world look so different, just even based on their climate, I think, or, or like yes. you, you live in an apartment in a giant city, one of the biggest cities in South America. Oh, what about, you know, what about somebody in Argentina or in the countryside of the UK and they have acres of land and they live in a big old farmhouse, you know, just to see how different the world is and how different the craft stores of the world are. <laughs> yeah, <it's completely laughs> the, the, the fabric and scissors. <laughs> when I do this stitch over takeover, I want to show like two stores. One is the a fancy store and the other is like a regular store. It's completely different. Like, Fun. Fancy is all so cute with coffee and everything. And, they uh, specialize in walls. Oh, so cool. it's amazing. Wow. But I have like a different kind of store that with the, uh, I have more options of uh, things like the, the threads and everything and the costs less, but it's different. Yeah, it's not, as, not, as, not, as, <laughs> not as much of an experience. And sometimes yes. the, you do pay for that atmosphere. You know, that that is an exa- exact example of what we we're talking about earlier of doing things purely for the creativity of it, for the inspiration of it. Just, you know, like you said, how much more inspired and excited you feel when you're in a space that is inspiring. When you're, when you have a a cup of coffee or even the scent of a cafe and it's decorated beautifully and you have options, you know, that's, that's going to put you in a different headspace other than some of these warehouse stores where it's like you go in and you pick out the things you need and you go out. Um, You know, you, you, that's important. It's important to no, Feel and you go see because I will do this. <laughs> I can't <laughs> wait. It'll be so amazing. fun to see it. And we'll definitely post all those and everybody who's listening will be able to see um, Amanda give us a tour of Sao Paulo. It'll be so cool. Yes, well, Amanda, 
tell us, I'm going to rapid fire you some favorite things questions. Do you have okay. a favorite color? Just generally? Color. I think blue. Mm. Any particular hue or shade? Light blue. Light blue. And yes. would you say, do you have a favorite floss color? Oh, no. Sometimes people have like a specific floss they love working with. <laughs> I, I really love it's a Brazilian brand. Uh, they made like the the rainbow, so oh, it's, cool. it's beautiful, and I love to work with them. It's the, a VM, like the variegated, yeah. Oh, it's beautiful, cool. and, it's, and rainbow colors, and they have the candy colors, and I oh, really fun. love when I'm able to work with them. Cool, love I that. I, that. I, you you do that a lot, like with lettering. You'll do the multicolored. It looks yes, really, really cool. That's the one. It's great. Yeah, <laughs> love that. And do you have a favorite uh, season of the year? Fall, winter, spring, summer. I think summer. Summertime. I really love going to the beach, tanning, and everything. Yeah. Love, 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 love. Do you have a favorite? I'll ask you. Do you have a favorite treat, like sweet food, dessert, or do? And do you have a favorite meal? Savory Chocolate. food. Chocolate. chocolate. <laughs> Milk chocolate or dark chocolate? Dark chocolate, always. There it is. I had a hunch. I had a hunch. I love <laughs> dark chocolate myself. And what about meal-wise? Do you have a favorite uh, food, you know, pizza, burritos, what, uh, whatever, hamburgers? You know, some people have a favorite. I love Mediterranean food. Mm. Love. So I think it's my favorite and Japanese. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah Sushi for taste. Yes. Yeah. I, 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 awesome. I, I, I stick with the both of this different culinaries. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Have a, why not have a spectrum? My favorite is everything. Um, and how about what's next on your bucket list for travel destinations? Where haven't you been that you are looking forward to going? I really want, when we went to London now this last time, we went to different places in the, how can I say countryside? Yeah, yeah, yeah. England. So it was really nice to see uh, different cities and all the, in England, everything is so cute, like the stone houses, and it's, oh, it's amazing. Everywhere you go, it's beautiful. Yeah. And I think I was, like, I really want to go to Scotland and Ireland yeah. and get to know, like, the United Kingdom. Yeah, whole, okay. You know? So you're going north next time. <laughs> yes, I, I think, like... Hopping over. Yes. Cool, very cool. Is. I've not been to Ireland myself, but, yeah, it's it's interesting how different... You know, it's such a small little island, ultimately, but so diverse from north to south, you know, in the UK. No, so yes, and very it's beautiful. Cool. We went to Cornwall over there now mm. this last time. And it like it's the, the where everything of the King Arthur thing yeah. happened. So it's really nice to know. And it beautiful cliffs and everything. So right. it's amazing. It is. So it's I like it's like, magical. Go to like more uh, calm and different places, mm. like with more nature, I think. So that's why I really want to know Scotland, I think, in Ireland. But yeah. let's see. <laughs> I don't Love know that. where I'm going. <laughs> um, so, Amanda, the last question. You've been doing portraits for a long time. Like, what was it, seven years, you say? Seven years, so, since 2015. I think that is such a cool perspective. As we sort of wrap up, what would you say, do you have any thoughts for people who are just starting out, for people who might have the book but haven't jumped in, or people who've maybe made a portrait but feel, you know, maybe their confidence is lacking? What advice would you have for new stitchers, being someone who's kind of so far down the path of figuring out your style and figuring out your rhythm and selling portraits? You know, looking back, what do you wish you could tell yourself when you were just starting out? Oh, you be confident on the work that you're doing and to be easy with you, you know, not so much, uh, how can I say, I think sometimes we are too, uh, I don't know the word, like mean to ourselves, you know, yeah. like you have to do it better. It's not okay. And no, go on your way and practice. I, as I said, I think you, when you practice anything, you be good at, at some point, but you have to practice. And but I think be gentle with yourself, like during the process, you know, I think it's good to inspired by different kind of, of work that we have, like online, you can find a, a lot of different types of work, but get inspired of by I don't think like copying is not a good thing. You can, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
get to that's a good distinction <laughs> yes <laughs> it's or, or if you do want to copy something fine but copy it for the skill of it for your own wall you know don't don't copy what someone else is doing and, and start selling that because that's not very good. But and, if you, you know, want to copy something for the skill of it, you know, that's different. And one time it happened, I really don't recall the, the, the profile of this person right now, but she did amazing uh, sunset thing, like with the threads, like put it on one above another. It was beautiful. I sent her a message saying, oh, my God, this is amazing. Can I use the same technique to put on on my work and I I will tag you? And she said, oh, of course. Then I made the piece. When I posted on Instagram, I put it there. I tag her like saying I was inspired by her work. So, yes. like to have this kind of trade, you know, to be gentle with the people that are inspiring you. I think that that's really important. Yeah. Love that. Be gentle. Just being gentle. It's with yourself, with everyone. I absolutely love that. Well, Amanda, thank you so, so much for chatting today. It has been an absolute pleasure. I'm sure everybody's going to love listening. Um, Will you tell us how to connect with you on Instagram? Oh, it's my people. So it's P-E-E-P-O-W? Perfect. We will link it in all of our show notes and stuff, make it easy for people to find you. But definitely give Amanda a follow. Her style is so cool. Her photography is gorgeous. And uh, we'll be she'll be helping us out with the spring fling. You can learn from her. And like she mentioned, um, we've got her Instagram takeover coming up. We'll be posting videos out and about uh, Brazil, which is so, so cool. Yay. And yeah, it's just been such a pleasure. We are so excited to uh, continue working with you as an ambassador. And we've got some fun things coming down the way so thank you so much for your time (laughs) thank you so much Lizzie thank you all of you and send messages and everything I will respond and that's it but be gentle to yourself it's like a process you have to be gentle with yourself yes it is it's a process not a destination yeah (laughs) awesome thank you And that's a wrap on me and Amanda's great conversation for the podcast. I sure hope you enjoyed it. I really love chatting with her. I always feel so inspired by her joy and her um, attitude just about finding the beautiful things in life, you know, taking the walk around your neighborhood that you find inspiring or taking time to go to the special places, the special stores to fill your creative well. Uh, I really love her advice and I hope that you feel uplifted by that too. So thank you so much for listening. This is officially our last episode of the Stitch People podcast for this season, but I do have a couple more interviews lined up by way of kind of bonus episodes that you can look forward to, but it might be a couple weeks until one of those releases. So just a heads up about that. And thank you so much for listening this season and joining us for all these great conversations with cross stitchers like you. I also want to thank our Stitch People team for making things happen behind the scenes. I want to thank all of you in the community for your supportive, wonderful, engagement and love and help with each other and I want to thank uh, Jonathan Boyle for our music and sound engineer Brandon Yost for making this podcast sound great and we will look forward to some bonus episodes and next season of the Stitch People podcast. If you have feedback, if you'd like to be interviewed next season, please go to stitchpeople.com slash podcast and check it out. We would love to hear from you and we'll see you next time on the next episode of the Stitch People podcast. Bye for now. Hey, Stitch People, as a way to say thank you for listening to this podcast, we have made a special discount just for you. If you go to stitchpeople.com and order anything, use the code PODCAST10 at checkout. That's P-O-D-C-A-S-T-1-0 at checkout to get 10% off your order as a way to say thanks. We sure appreciate you. Thanks for listening. Podcast is a production of Beansky LLC and Stitch People. Copyright 2022. All rights reserved.